Good morning. My name is Frank Mastors. I am the practitioner of the day, and I will be leading pre-service meditation. Thank you for joining us. I've lit this candle. This candle is a representation of the living God within each of us. Allow yourself just to be aware of the living Christ within you, the living God, the living Buddha, the living Muhammad, living Allah. God by any name is God. Allow your awareness just to open. Just open to the truth of who you really are. You are the living light. Take a breath in and release. Take another breath in and release. Take a third breath in and release. Allow yourself to gently move into the silence. Or allow yourself to move into the noise, whatever serves you. Allow yourself to move into that place within you where you are most comfortable. the place where you're most open. The place where you are most aware. Most aware of God as you. In the quietness of this place, in the quietness of this love, just say, I'm ready. I am so ready just to be. I am so ready just to love. I am so ready just to feel. I am so ready just to be so aware of God in me, as me. And allow yourself just to sit 
and just to be present. Where we are the living light.
as you've allowed yourself to, to be present to spirit within, allow your awareness to become completely merged with it. It's the place where there is no separation. To the place where God is completely as you. So at this very moment, I invite you back into the space, bringing, in, bringing with you your complete awareness as the very presence of the living God. For you are the living light. that lives and moves and has its very beingness on this planet. You are the living God, far beyond any sense of limitation or lack. Or pain. or hate. Or anything else that would limit you. You are the living Christ. You are the living Buddha. You are the living Allah. You are the living power. You are the living peace. You are the living joy. 
You are all that God is. And so it is. Please come back into awareness completely in this space. And so it is. Gems of stories never told before They stand before us like an open door The truth is shining just like diamonds on the floor Where for us to knock upon the door Good morning, good morning, and happy Sunday morning. <laughs> yes, I cracked myself up. In order to help with our method of recording service, we request that congregants and participants who are not speaking, performing, or interpreting 
to please turn cameras off until after service. At that time, all can come on camera to fellowship and share the love. Thank you for your cooperation. Ah, <sighs> welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Greater Baltimore's virtual service. I am Tracy Rhymes, your host. Da -da -da -da. Senior Minister, Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson is our speaker. Musician is Felicia Taylor. Serving as today's practitioner who led the pre-service meditation is Frank Mistoris. Assisting with making this service open, inviting, and accessible to the deaf community are our sign language interpreters, Faith Moore and Sonia Chavis. Holding things down, working behind the scenes is Jim Lefter. On behalf of Reverend Dr. Ray, thank you all for your service. At CSLGB, every Sunday is an invite a friend or family member Sunday. Make sure you spread the love and invite someone to service. We would love to have them hang out with us. Frank Mastoris has been a has been on a spiritual path for a long time. He fell in love with God when he was 20 and has been on a spiritual path since. He has always been looking and searching for that deep connection with God. He has been involved with religious science since 1992. Having been traveling for his job, he saw many religious science churches at different stages in growth and development. He has served in the music ministry, the Board of Trustees, greater, greeter and Hospitality Service, TA for Classes, and Practitioner Coordinator. He is here to serve the community of CSL Greater Baltimore and the community beyond. Thank you, Frank. Good morning. Welcome to the service for CSL Greater Baltimore. My name is Frank Mastoris. I am your practitioner of the day. For opening prayer, I know that there's one power, one beloved presence, one essence that is so beautiful, that celebrates life, that celebrates itself, that gives joy and peace and laughter and love and is the very essence of everything. It is expressing within, throughout, and about every single one of us as every single one of us. And I know we call it God because we have no name other than that. And even that limit is a limit, that name is a limitation because it's so much greater than anything we could ever be be, ever do, ever want, ever know. I am so grateful because I know that this service where Reverend Ray talks about our celebrating the triumphant journey, we are that triumphant journey. We are unified with that very presence and that very power called God, and the triumphant journey is us. I know that this service is perfect, whole, complete, as every one of us is perfect, whole, and complete. And I know it's good, it's done, it's perfect. 
and God releases to the law and its divine perfection. Knowing that it's done in perfection as each of us. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Frank. The Center for Spiritual Living Greater Baltimore's community honors the world's religions. One tree, many branches. One mountain, many paths. One world, many religions and spiritual traditions. With the lighting of these candles on the first Sunday of each month, we not only honor each person on their select path, but we also bless them and recognize the light, the love, and the life-affirming nature of spirit as it shows itself in each path, in each practice, and in each person. I have some announcements for you. Okay, enough of my singing. Hallelujah. Woo! Okay. We currently have three weekly ongoing ways to study, learn, and discuss. On the first and third Monday nights, the Sacred Contracts Book Club hosted by Nancy Rosenberg. On Wednesday nights, the Science of Mind textbook exploration group woo, and the Thursday night study group facilitated by Reverend Dr. Ray. Sign up for the CSLGB newsletter, the CSLGB Facebook and Instagram pages, and get more news and information by visiting cslgreaterbaltimore.org or .com. There will be a community healing ritual with practitioner Frank Mastoris. November 23rd, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time via Zoom. As we move forward into the holiday season, the holidays are emotionally charged. CSLGB is offering a simple release and renewal ritual designed to allow each of the participants to release the emotional charge of past events and circumstances. Come and let go of any circumstance that will interfere with your ability to fully enjoy this wondrous season of change and celebration. Come and be loved. You will need a piece of paper and a writing utensil. That's it. So to attend or for more information, Contact Reverend Dr. Ray. Courageous Conversations. The CSLGB C7 Core will have group and panel discussions with Q's and A's to encourage open, honest, and authentic dialogues regarding topics such as race, gender, and being LGBTQ. If you are interested in more information about this, contact Reverend Dr. Ray. If this fundraising vision inspires you and you are interested in serving on the fundraising committee in any way possible, contact the chair, Rainica Permetla, 
and come together to strategize the most effective ways to manifest funding. To get more information, meeting dates and time, and join the committee, send an email to reineker.permetla at gmail.com. Here at CSLGB, where every Sunday is an invite a friend or family member Sunday. Did you know it is also become a member Sunday? That was a little country. That's right. Every Sunday is a great day to choose this as your spiritual community, your spiritual family, and hang out with me. The first step is to take the discovery class, which is offered online and can be taken at any time. For more information on how to become a member or what comes after the discovery class, visit the website or send an email to info at cslgreaterbaltimore.org or visit the website for more information on becoming a member of CSLGB. Welcome home. The CSLGB Ministry of Education has an upcoming class. Jesus, the man, myth, Messiah, and metaphysical master and mystery. Mm. The class will explore who and what Jesus is to us today. Is he a historical person who actually lived? If so, what is the impact on this on us today? Of this on us today? The facilitator is Reverend Dr. Ray. Class begins to be determined based on interests. And it's expected in January of this coming year. Yeah. The investment is a love offering. And if interested, contact, ooh, me, yes, for for the full class descriptions and more information, you are encouraged to visit the website, cslgreaterbaltimore.org or .com. To find more educational opportunities in ours and other communities we are partnered with. If you would like to receive a daily text and voicemail from Reverend Dr. Ray, type J-O-I-N-2-833-665-2. To begin receiving your daily inspirations, you will be glad you did. All right. On the count of three, we shout, prayer works. Are you ready? All right. One, two, three. Prayer works. Woo! All right. Y'all are loud today. We, as a community, continue to treat and move our feet, knowing the truth for everyone around the planet. Prayer requests can be sent at any time via email to info at cslgreaterbaltimore.org. <clears throat> Felicia Taylor is a singer, songwriter, and producer. She has released two singles with a third on the way in early December. Her music can be found on Spotify and all other streaming platforms 
under Felicia Taylor, or you can connect to Felicia on her websites, FeliciaTaylorMusic.com, FeliciaTaylor.HearNow.com, or on Facebook. I give you Felicia. When the best of me is barely breathing When I'm not somebody I believe in Hold on to me When I miss the light, the night is falling When I'm slamming all the doors you've opened Hold on to me Thank you, Felicia. Frank now returns to lead us in a spiritual practice. Uh, our spiritual practice today is a contemplative meditation. In contemplative meditation, you hear some, you hear a quote or two and you focus in on what calls you. Our first quote is from Richard Rohr. We are created with an inner drive. A necessity that sends us looking for our true self. Whether we know it or not. This journey is a spiral.
and never a straight line. Matthew Fox shared, in the end, the universe can only be explained in terms of celebration. It is all an exuberant expression of existence itself. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Frank. Senior Minister, Center for Spiritual Living, Greater Baltimore, Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson has been referred to as a Renaissance man. One look at his resume and the reason becomes clear. As a lifelong learner with a passion for self-development, personal transformation, transmutation, and self-awakening, he lives his bliss as a teacher, mentor, speaker, minister, silly man, and so much more. His mission is to live, move, and be an active, which is an acronym, authentic, compassionate, transparent, inspired, vibrant, and empowered member of society who serves to educate, elucidate, emancipate, awaken, and empower people and communities. I give you silly man if you could only see him off camera. Good morning. <laughs> and while Tracy said prayer works and she emphasized we treat and move our feet. 
since I'm still healing, feel free to treat my feet. <laughs> Just saying, there's no put that out there. Okay, so it's uh, the week before Thanksgiving. We're supposed to be in the state of gratitude. And yet there's all kind of stuff happening in the world. There's all kind of stuff that can make it challenging to feel grateful. And that's part of our work in this spiritual practice is recognizing that we need not be grateful for all things, but even the, in the midst of all things, there is something to be grateful for. Yes. Not necessarily because of or in that specific instance, and yet there is something in the world, in your life, in your consciousness to be grateful for. Today, we are still climbing that mountain, wow. still pausing, still journeying, still adventuring, because that's what this spiritual life is. Today, specifically, we're talking about the triumphant journey. We appreciate, we celebrate, and demonstrate. And we're going to talk about those three things. The growth within as we arrive and move forward along the sacred continuum. Ralph Marston says, with an attitude of gratitude, you'll realize that you already do have it all. Now pause, breathe that in. As we've been saying the last couple of weeks, breathe in the view you'll realize that you already do have it all and feel gratitude for that. Now, what is the it that you already have? He goes on to say, everything you could ever desire is already inside of you. Appreciate it, love it, nurture it enough so it is fully expressed in your life. See, when we find that thing that gives us reason to feel gratitude and we appreciate it because what you appreciate, appreciates. You get a baseball card and it's like, oh, wow, Tracy, I have an original Babe Ruth or I have an original Roberto Clemente. I have an original baseball card and I appreciate that I have it, so I take care of it. And then what happens? A collector contacts me and says, I'll give you $100,000 for it. I only paid 15 cents for it. But over my 55 years, it appreciated because I appreciated it. Do you appreciate yourself? Do you appreciate your relationships? Do you appreciate your meal, your clothing, your body? Do you appreciate it to allow it to appreciate? And as he says, do you love it? Do you nurture it enough so that it is fully expressed in and throughout your life? Because herein lies the practice. What is that sacred continuum? This idea that when we can appreciate, when we can love it and celebrate it, when we can demonstrate it, then there is a demonstration of a living, a lived experience of what it is we are seeking to experience. Like you're actually living it. So you're not looking for peace of mind, you're living peace of mind. You're not looking, as I always say, I stopped saying Thanksgiving per se many years ago and said, you know what, why should we say thanks when we have the opportunity to be thanks? It's easy for us to say, hey, happy Thanksgiving, it's more challenging for my life to be thanks living, to let my life be a living demonstration of appreciation and celebration and demonstration of this sacred continuum that is the divine. So let's break it down. To appreciate, to recognize the full worth of, and to understand whatever it is, situation, thing, whatever, fully, to recognize the full implications of. So once again, do you appreciate you? Do you recognize the full worth and value of you? 
your friendships, your relationships, your body, your mind? Do you recognize the full worth of it? Do you understand fully who and what, whatever this is, whatever the situation is, whatever the condition is, whatever the spiritual practice is, and recognize the full implications of? Let's talk a little bit more about this thing called appreciation. The etymology of appreciate, I'm not going to go through all this. I want to highlight a couple of things. The etymology of appreciate as a verb, to esteem or value highly, to set a price to, to rise in value, to be fully conscious of, and that implies the use of wise judgment or delicate perception. So to appreciate, now we're going to break this down a little bit more because you see that word it says price and it has it up there twice, right? But price, the etymology of price is to praise. So when you appreciate, you are in a state of praise. Praise, the earliest sense in English, blah, blah, blah. To assess, to set a price or value on, to prize and hold in high esteem. So when you appreciate, you praise. And when you praise, you hold in high esteem. You recognize the value. So once again, do you appreciate you, your relationships, your finances? And are you able to esteem it to such a degree that you recognize that you are in a state of praise regarding it? Ernest Holmes says, gratitude is one of the chief graces of human existence. And it is, and is crowned in heaven with a consciousness of unity. Gratitude is one of the chief graces of human existence. When we are able to find, feel, live in a state of gratefulness, then we recognize, we understand, how many times have we said it? Heaven is a state of consciousness. And we experience it to the degree that we become conscious of it. Gratitude gives us the opportunity to be in that state of consciousness more often and to recognize the unity of it more often. Lift your hearts in praise. Some words related to this idea of praise, to adore, to worship, to applaud, to commend, to compliment, to cheer. So when you are in a state of appreciation, you are saluting, you are cheering, you are complimenting, you are recognizing some synonyms for praise, to bless. So when you appreciate, you are blessing it. I appreciate you. And because I appreciate you, it means there must be a blessing within my appreciation because my appreciation is praise you, praise for you, praising with you. Therefore, it means there is a blessing, the energy of blessing the energy of glorifying, the energy of a carol. Tis the season to be grateful. Yeah, that's not the song. Grateful, 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 grateful Lee. I am grateful for all things now. Hush, hush up, Sherry. Hush up. <laughs> but you get the idea. It's this idea of all of these things are interconnected deeply. They're not separate. To appreciate is to praise. To praise is to applaud. To applaud is to bless. To bless is to appreciate. All one and the same. Ernest Holmes says, there is an invisible presence hidden within us. Now, once again, let's be reminded, this is the language he's using because we understand that this presence is all that is. So it's not just within us but it is us, it's around us, it's before and behind, to the right and the left, above and below, it is all that is. There is an invisible presence and it's really not hidden technically, but we are not able at times to recognize it. So let's just be clear. There is an invisible presence to which there are times that we are unaware of it. 
and it, the source of it in a higher power and which acts through our actions, that which God is, is moving in through and as us. It's all that is. So Frank's meditation, pre-service meditation, was God meditating. Felicia's songs, God singing. The interpreter, Sonia and Faith, interpreting. It's God interpreting. Because it acts through our actions, because there is only it acting. It wills through our minds. There is only one mind, and that mind is God. And reveals itself in what we are doing. God is a verb. Love is a verb. Faith is a verb. Appreciation is a verb. Gratitude is a verb. Celebrate. Celebrate is also a verb. So let's talk about part two of this trinity. The etymology of celebrate. Honor, sing praises of. To practice often. So if I meditate often, uh, I'm in a state of celebration. Synonyms for celebrate. Oh, we see this again. Bless, to carol, to exalt, to glorify, to him, to magnify, to praise. So wait a minute. So appreciation and celebration, it's the same energy. It's one sacred continuum. Essential meaning of celebrate, to do something special or enjoyable. It says for an important event. Today is an important event because you're breathing, you're here, you're present. It's an important event. That means it's worth celebrating. To praise, to say something that is great or important about something or someone. A religious ceremony. Oh, so right now this is sort of a form of celebration? Yep. It's all one and the same. How often do you give yourself the opportunity to celebrate? See, we set certain days aside, Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Valentine's Day, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, all these things. We set them aside as special days, which is fine. But recognizing that the energy of Kwanzaa, the energy of Hanukkah, the energy of Easter and Valentine's Day is an all year, every day, moment by moment opportunity to recognize the sacredness of and to celebrate and praise and appreciate. You don't need to wait for Valentine's Day to give your beloved flowers. You don't need to wait for somebody's birthday to say happy Labor's Day, right? You don't have to wait. That's an inside joke. Sorry, Tracy's laughing right now. Ernest Holmes says, the history of man, the history of humanity, is a record of the awakening of the self, lowercase self, to the self, the emergence of the universal spirit through the individual mind. Every day, every moment, every breath, every thought, every word is an opportunity for us to recognize this self as self and to allow the universal spirit to emerge. It's already there. Allow it to be present by our recognition and understanding of it. What did we say a few sentences ago? We believe that heaven is within and we experience it to the degree that we become conscious of it. Holmes said, the only God we will have an intimate relationship with or truly know is the one we embody. You have to be aware and present to embody moment by moment, thought by thought. How are we showing up in the world? What are we demonstrating through our mental equivalent, per se? To demonstrate is to give a practical exhibition and explanation of, as in how something works, how something moves. So when Frank is leading a meditation, he is giving you a practical explanation of and demonstration of, exhibition of, this is what you do. Breathe, be present. Allow this thought, this sentence, this quote to permeate your consciousness and be present. It's a demonstration. A demonstration is also to clearly show the existence or truth of something by giving proof or evidence. 
So if we believe, Tracy, does prayer work? Prayer works. Prayer works. Then we should be able to see proof or evidence of this. Does meditation work? We should be able to see proof or evidence. The truth of it should be present. Otherwise, it's just a theoretical. But note, give a practical, not theoretical, a practical exhibition and explanation of to show it. What are all of these? What are, Tracy, what are these? Charts. Charts graphs. and graphs. Charts and graphs. Chart, we love, we love our charts and graphs as, as people, especially the, the scientists and the mathematicians and those folks. Charts and graphs and the sociologists, charts and graphs. Why? The Be government. The government. You should have saw Tracy's face just then. <laughs> because it gives us a way of demonstrating, of identifying the evidence of quantifying the data. What is the data indicating? Well, what is the data of our spiritual practices? What is the data of our appreciation indicating? The data of our praise and celebration and what is it quantifying? What is it proving to us? What is it giving us the evidence of? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of, evidence. So if we're talking about demonstrations, then we have to recognize that there must be measurable indicators for us to identify what is the proof, what is the action, what is the evidence of this thing? What is the answered prayer? Because there has to be a demonstration. That's why we say demonstration, answered prayer. What is that in our lives? How does that show up? How am I being asked? You know, the KPIs, it's saying you do research, you target, there's a strategy, there's an analysis, there's all this stuff. And then as a sacred continuum, you rinse and repeat. You do it again, treat and move your feet. I don't see the demonstration. I don't see the, the answered prayer. Then do it again. I don't see equity and justice in the system of then treat and do it again. But I don't see, I still see evidence of racism, sexism, and homophobia. I still see the evidence then treat and move your feet again and again. And again, now move your feet. What does that mean? Because a lot of folks think move your feet. It just simply means to treat again. No, move your feet might mean pray and make a phone call. Pray and vote. Pray and send an email to a congressman. Pray and move your feet. Pray and get together with a group of like-minded people and strategize on what are we as spiritual, as religious scientists, what are we called to now do to change the data points? What are we called to do in order for what it, God is moving through us? So as answered prayer, God moving through us is the answer to. So what did Frank say? Frank said, we are the triumphant journey. Why? Because we are answered prayer in human form. If we recognize that, and act from that consciousness. Amoda May Jivan says, awakening is no longer about abandoning or transcending physical reality to live a spiritual life. It's the fulfillment of our divine destiny by living the truth of our inner radiance while in our earthly bodies. It's being fully human and fully divine right here and right now. Breathe in the view, appreciate that, celebrate that and demonstrate that. I remember years ago when my oldest son, Kenneth, introduced me to Neil Donald Walsh was like, dad, you got to read this book, Conversations with God. 
And, you know, I'm reading it or whatnot. And eventually I come across Neil Donald Walsh saying, the promise, the promise of God is that you are his son, her offspring. Whoa, whoa, what, what did he just say? He just changed the gender. And I paused and was like, what is he doing? And then he goes, it's likeness. Wait, he did it again. His equal. Whoa. And I couldn't go any further. I had to sit with that for a while. The promise of God is that you are the son of, the daughter of, the child of. You are made in the image and likeness of it because it is all there is. You are the offspring of it. You are an individualized incarnation of it. And you are, because it is all there is, you are the very equal of creation itself. It is not above you. It is you. Ooh, how did I get to, hmm. Yeah, breathe that. I got to scratch my head on that. Yes, scratch your head then. Breathe it in. Do whatever it is you need to do, but recognize it. You are it. It is you. Appreciate yourself as it. Celebrate yourself as it. And then go out in the world and be the very demonstration of what this means to walk on this planet at this time as a person who knows their divine spiritual magnificence, whose mental equivalent, your thoughts, your words, your feelings, and your actions are in alignment with this truth. Breathe. Reverend Dr. Ray says a lot. She said a lot. All of these ain't my words. Anyway, for I was so rudely interrupted during my sermon. <laughs> so Emmett Fox said, you should constantly show your faith in God by giving thanks for the blessings you expect to receive. This is why during a spiritual mind treatment, there's gratitude because I already expect this to be answered prayer. Why would I expect anything else? So I'm already giving thanks. Oh, oh, check this out. But didn't Yeshua, Jesus, also say, when praying, pray as if you already have the thing you're praying for. And if I'm praying for it, then I'm clearly not asking for it because I already have it. I'm affirming it, which means I am expressing my gratitude for it. So give thanks for the blessings that you fully expect to receive. And then Ernest Holmes said, the only God anyone can know is the God of their own, he says, inner life. The only God of their lived, expressed life, the one that they embody. And as always, this is our daily practice. The realization that we have as much of this power to use in our daily life as we can believe and embody. And the active embodiment of it. Live it. What are we encouraged, invited, compelled to do as the activity of this divine power in and as our own lives. See, when you know this, you have a moral imperative that calls you forward. You have an ethical imperative that calls you forward. You have a spiritual imperative that calls you forward. Because once you know, I have the full activity of the universe backing me, right? It's almost like, the idea of, you know, you go out on the playground because the bully is confronting you at three o'clock. I'm getting you. And you step out there like it's going to be what it's going to be. And then you step out there and the bully steps to you. And then the bully backs up. And then the bully backs up. And the bully backs up. And then the bully turns around and runs away. And you're like, what just happened? And then you hear a sound behind you and you look over your shoulder and you see 55 of your best friends who have your back. You see the principal who has your back. You see your teachers who have your back. The entire universe 
has your back. And when you know that, ethically, morally, spiritually, you are compelled to show up differently. Breathe. This week's invitation to practice. Number one, journal. Think about however you choose to do this. What am I grateful for today? What or who do I appreciate today? And how do I show it? How do I show my appreciation? Not, what did you say, Tracy? I said, I eat it all. She said, I eat it all. <laughs> Ray Cook for an army of a thousand. And I eat it all. Every bite of pizza, I eat it all. And I smack when I eat. Because yep. it's good. That's how Tracy <laughs> shows it. Wow. Let us breathe. <laughs> Number two, what or who do I celebrate today? And how do I show it? Who do you celebrate? Remembering that this means someone that you compliment, something that you compliment, something that you bless, you praise it. Who or what do you celebrate today? And how do you show it? What do I demonstrate today? Because keep in mind, if, you, if there was a reality TV show of your life, you know, Fifi has often said, I don't know if Fifi's on the call or not. Fifi would often say during our Wednesday night class, you know, to be a fly on the wall in y'all's house to see what kind of shenanigans the two of you get up to, I can only imagine. Yes, trust and believe. Tracy and I often say, if we were a reality TV show, ratings would be off the chart because on any given day, on any given moment, ain't no telling what, what's going on. What Ray is going to do. If you were a reality TV show, <laughs> we... No, but seriously, if there was a reality TV show following you around, it was the reality TV show of your life, what would it be demonstrating? What would people see? Would they see that you have very little patience? Would they see that when you are on the phone with Wayfair and someone gets on the phone and they keep putting you on hold and you're like, ah! is that what they would see? Or would they see, uh, Tracy said, yep. But would they see someone who, in their spiritual practices, so what I'm knowing, what I'm affirming, what I'm declaring, what I'm expressing gratitude for in this moment before I even make this call is that I know this call is going smooth and with ease and grace, and that the exact reason that I am calling is already resolved, already resolved. I have the right person and the right response and the right desired outcome, and that is the truth that I am grateful for, and it is so. And so it is. Because so Tracy said that's for later because she has to make a phone call. But what would the reality TV show demonstrate? What would the audience see as your lived demonstration? And then lastly, have a conversation with. What? Oh, tu hablas espanol. Cuatro personas have. Four people, four people about the sacred continuum and what it means to you to practice appreciation and celebration and demonstration in and as your daily life. Don't wait for special occasions to appreciate and celebrate and demonstrate as your daily life. Chat with four folks about that. And then lastly, our declaration if you are feeling so aligned with me after I read it the first time, then you are invited to say it aloud with me. Ready? Ready. Today, I live as the power, joy, and magnificence of God in dynamic demonstration. Together. Today, I live as the power, joy, and magnificence of God in dynamic demonstration. Breathe in dynamic demonstration. Breathe and prepare your heart and your spirit for another divine demonstration of this exact magnificence of God in dynamic demonstration as Felicia graces us once again with the beauty of her being, the beauty of her voice, and the magic of her spirituality.
Ah, thank you, Felicia. Blessings. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. And in silence, it's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Whoa, yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, Felicia. Whew, I didn't catch my breath because I was over, I was over there dancing. Me and my one foot, we was dancing. We was, we was jamming. Everything was moving, but your feet. Everything was moving, feet. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Ah, so ground and breathe and recognize that at this time of service, we anchor and ground into the ability to appreciate, to celebrate and demonstrate the law of circulation as we actively engage in what it means to tithe where you are spiritually fed, what it means to tithe, as Tracy says, to keep the lights on, et cetera. That is this time of service for you to offer from your time, talent, and treasure. Now, if you're new, you may not know that the practitioners of CSL Greater Baltimore, on top of their regularly scheduled tithes, have pledged $25,000 by the end of the year. And as of the 14th of November, that number currently is 14,760. The community's matching pledge also on top of their regularly scheduled tithes, 25,000 by end of year. At this present moment, as of 1027, that number is 2,750. Now here at CSL Greater Baltimore, we recognize that this thing called tithing isn't just about dollars and cents. It's about our consciousness. It's about our health and well-being, right? So when we get to the declaration, be grounded in recognizing that this wealth that you are tithing through PayPal, through text to giving, through the postal mail service is coming from a consciousness that recognizes 
I am prospering in my health. I am prospering in my relationships. I am abundantly good with joy. Tracy, cue the song. Joy. We wish you joy, comfort, and peace. I hope y'all can hear her. Joy, <laughs> comfort, and peace. Okay, thank you. It's, 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 it's. So if you want more information on how to tithe or donate, feel free to go to the website or check in with any of the board of trustees. And if you didn't know, you can divide a certain portion of your tithe. So 50% can go to the new building fund, 25% to compassionate care, 25 to Tracy. 25 to uh, education. Like you can divide it up. So if you ever want more information, feel free to reach out or go to the website. Now, the Declaration of Financial Wealth and Abundance, as I said before, it's the consciousness of when we affirm this and declare this, we are knowing that this is for our finances, our relationships, our physical health and well-being, our emotional health and well-being. It's for all of the ways that spirit is showing up as us. If you are feeling in alignment with that, then say with me, I joyfully, consciously, and gratefully participate in the law of circulation. I trust in the spiritual principle that says, as I sow into my beloved community, I demonstrate my awareness of standing, not only in the flow, but as the flow itself. As I sow of myself, my time, my treasure, my talent, I demonstrate my support and engagement in my community's vision, mission, and purpose. I actively give as a demonstration of manifesting, of reaping the harvest of a world that works for all. Breathe, breathe in the view. Breathe in the view of what it means to be the very demonstration of the triumphant journey, to breathe in the very recognition that you are the awesomeness that is God. Breathe in the view of recognizing that anything you, you desire, you already have it. The desire of your heart is the desire of the universe. It is already here. We already have it. So a world that works for all, breathe it in. A world that works for all already right now exists within each and every one of us. How are we being called to bring that realization forth into the world? to bring it to others who know nothing about what we do or our teaching or our centers, to bring it to those who know nothing other than trauma and pain, to bring this thing called life and love to everything on the face of this planet, every rock, every bird, every fish, every blade of grass, because all of it too is and must be God in expression. How awesome is that? Breathe. And go out and be awesome today. Go out and be it. Recognizing that today is board meeting Sunday. So after service, there will be a board meeting. You are free and welcome to attend if you so choose. There is also the opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one prayer with Frank giving Frank the opportunity to know the truth about you. And as we always say, you don't have to have something that's going yeah. in order for Frank to, or for the practitioners to pray. You can have things that are going like, ha, ah, and have the practitioner pray more, ha, ah, ha. Ah. Or if you're already, I feel, ha, ha, then you could get, ha, 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 ha. Like you can get more, <laughs> Tracy's laughing at me. You can get more and more of the infinite goodness that you are already feeling. So if you want prayer, type the word prayer in the chat box and Tracy will make sure that you get in a breakout room. If you want prayer and you are staying for the board meeting, put both so Tracy knows, oh, so when the board president says, is everyone back? Tracy can say that we still have one other person in prayer who wants to be in. So then we know timing wise. So prayer for prayer, both for both prayer and board meeting. Tracy's laughing at me again. And I think that's it for that. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you.
Knowing that today is the Sunday before Thanksgiving, I simply want to remind you, have an amazing Thanksgiving. Have an amazing opportunity to come together with friends, family, and simply live in a state of infinite appreciation, celebration, and demonstration of the infinite goodness of God as you and those gathered around you and that meal you are partaking. Breathe it in. And at this time, we close service, but recognize that spirit is always in service to itself, through itself, as itself, always. So even when we leave this sacred space of this CSL Greater Baltimore virtual service, we go out into the world and continue to be God, spirit, source, the universe in service to itself, through itself, by itself, about itself. It's all God. It's all good. We appreciate, we celebrate, we demonstrate this truth that we know. This is, and so it is. Blessings and much love. Tracy will open up the chat so everybody can love up on each other. And if Frank is still there, I know that Frank wanted to announce an art show. So Frank, feel free to let folks know. See you in a second. Love you. <laughs>